So this is a lead ingot or a bar, however you want to call it. I made this uh, from batteries that I've taken the lead out of and then refined it. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you the process of making one of these. It uh, It's a little bit long and I don't really even think it's worth it, but it is a process worth knowing how to do. And the pr it's also good to know which ways are best and I've gone through all the trial and error to find out which chemicals are best to uh, help unoxidize the lead oxide and turn it back into lead so that you're not wasting as much and to know which metals won't interact in the wrong way and which salts and what other things will burn off and the fire risks all that stuff hopefully I'll be able to show you all of that so this is a little tool I got from Amazon that uh, preheats well, it's supposed to heat all the way the, uh, the lead. It takes a long time though, so I normally help it with a torch. Um, what I plan to do here is show you which chemicals work best for separating the oxides from the lead and also what might be considered hazardous and fumes and whatnot, you know gotta get that out of the way so we don't risk doing it in the future. Yeah, I feel all the way around that we got all that out. But you can clearly see all these oxides. We don't want all of them. Okay. One thing you don't want to do is put your spoon on a wood table after it's been hot like that. Sulfur. This is a sulfur lime mix, but it's mostly sulfur. It kind of works, but the downside is it can catch on fire and the fumes are very, very strong and not in a good way. Rotten egg smell, of course. Uh, I would say don't do this because it doesn't help that well and you will suffer from it. Just even this little bit is going to immediately catch on fire, so I don't use much. One thing I did try in the past was cornstarch, because I heard starches, sugars, um, can help break it up. So I got a little bit of that, put it on there. Mix it in. I've never seen it do anything other than char up or caramelize if you use sugar. Baking powder. Also browns up, last I remember at least. It's been a while since I used it. Also doesn't have much of an effect. Not worth it. Here's some potassium nitrate that I've purified and collected myself. Um, use very little of this because you know anything about potassium nitrate? I use it in gunpowder, which is originally what I made this for. Just to see if I can make gunpowder. Now I know potassium nitrate does like to turn into a liquid at a higher temperature. So that's why I originally tested this. Doesn't seem to get hot enough though. It takes probably close to 2000 degrees to get this to melt though. So that's not gonna work. One thing that's kinda worked was charcoal. And I think the reason why is because it attaches to all the oxides. It does not turn the oxides back into lead though. The other downside with charcoal is you got a fire hazard again. You can see it's clumping all the lead together with it right there. 
fine and dandy, I suppose, but not the best. Second to best, sodium hydroxide, also known as lye. Uh, it's very caustic, uh, which means it's a base and it's the opposite of an acid. Uh, the problems with it is it can burn you when you're using it. Uh, there you go. Just put a little bit on there. Immediately starts working. I'd like to get a little more on there. Oh, is that? Not too bad. But I can't do it. There we go. There we go. That should be good. This also creates a tar like substance for everything that it interacts with. So, what caustic things do is they strip the oxygen from the elements around it. So, that's what this right here is. You need a lot of lye to get this to work though. And it's very messy, but it works very well. Now, the best thing I found is potassium hydroxide flakes. Uh, this is potash or uh, it's also used as an electrolyte. It's also very caustic. It by far works the best and it has less of a um, tar like substance. It's more like a powder when, when it's done and uh, also it melts at a lower temperature so you don't have to get the, the solder or the lead is hot. Um, here we go. See it just where it rolls across, it just makes it clean. Sometimes, if it is a little hot, it'll yellow like that, but that's all right. And also, you don't need as much of this as you would the lye. But so let's add a little bit more. Go ahead and purify this a little better. That's probably about what you'll need. For this amount, got my little tray here of for trash. There we go. This also makes a tar thing if it doesn't go all the way. The downside to this. turns the most back into lead though, out of all of them, so you waste less lead, which is always awesome. Now this stuff right here is still very caustic, so I wouldn't be touching that even when it cools down, it would give you a chemical burn. The best thing you can do for that is... Uh, lots of water. If you just put a little water on it, you'll just spread it, but if you get lots of water, dilute it. Or uh, get some vinegar. Vinegar will do too. Okay, so we can see here now we got a fairly clean product. A lot less oxide. A lot less waste. That's awesome. That's the first uh, batch of purifying, at least. Well, the first batch in this. I show a video where I'll do it in a bigger batch where I'll superheat the lead to get it all to come down in my furnace, uh, which also melts all the other stuff with it, so it's not the best way to do it, but it's the fastest. So this is just the in here. And eventually we'll get to, like, this the brick, or whatever you want to call it. It's heavy.